Hi everyone, welcome to our Spreecast. The topic is how to make it as a fashion blogger. We have some of the very best here. I'm Elizabeth Holmes with Wall Street Journal. We also have the fabulous Tina Craig from Bag Snob. Hi! Obviously, we also have Brian Boy here. And then your very favorite, your most favorite, snarky red carpet commentators, Tom and Lorenzo, are also joining us. We're so glad to have you here. Thank you guys Thank for, you for having us. time. And I just want to make sure that the audience knows you guys can submit questions. So you can either do it by typing there um, on your screen, or you can also um, come on video and ask questions that way. So this is definitely interactive. So let me know um, what your questions are. But I want to start first by asking everyone here how they sort of got started as a fashion blogger. So Brian Boy. Do you want to kick it off for us? Well, well, I started my blog eight years ago with a travel journal. You know, I went on a holiday. I went to Moscow, Russia for a month. And then when I got back, I started to blog about myself and what I did on a day-to-day basis. And fashion is just, you know, something that I've been interested in since I was a child. So just really, it started as a hobby. It started as an interest and really just evolved from there. And look what you've done. It's amazing. And Tina, how about you? Well, I have always been in the fashion and entertainment industries, and um, I went from being on MTV VJ with multiple shows on TV on fashion to moving to Texas, getting married, having a baby, and I was just bored out of my mind. And my best friend, Kelly Cook, and I were buying bags for each other. We've always done that since we were in college. We've been collecting bags forever. And her husband suggested we start a journal online so he wouldn't have to be privy to this conversation of us calling each other all the time. Did you see that bag? Did you see that bag? Oh, I hate it. So he goes, just write to each other when the babies are napping, because she had just moved to Cambridge and had a baby as well. And so we started this journal about almost eight years ago. It was in 2005, that summer. And we just thought it would be a place for us to have our rants, bags we love, bags we don't like, and it was just for our entertainment. And we didn't know that women were, because back then if you Googled a Chanel bag in 2005, our little journal would pop up, because nobody else was talking about Chanel and, you know, the brand yeah. not so on. Yes, and so one of our readers turned out to be Linda Grant, who was a fashion editor for British Vogue, and she wrote an article on us, and that's how we realized, oh my gosh, this is a real business. And we started with $20, $10 for the name Bag Snob, $10 to host it. Within two months, we made like a 2,000% return, so we, we were both business term, uh, majors at USC, so we said, oh wait, we can make money at this and buy bags? Okay, so we just like kicked into gear, and <laughs> now here we are. That's amazing. <laughs> and Tom and Lorenzo, how about you guys? How did you get started? Uh, we started because we started the blog on Project Runway. Um, uh, Lorenzo had been pushing me for several years to 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 start a blog with him, and I was very reluctant to do it. I and I didn't re we didn't really have a subject matter to talk about. And at the time, this was 2006. There was not a lot of writing about Project Runway. Uh, believe it or not. And so we came out of the gate with a built-in audience because we were providing a space that at the time nobody else was providing. And it was right at the time that Project Runway was at the height of its popularity. Summer of 2006 was when like Heidi and Tim Gunn were on the cover of every magazine. Uh, so we, it was luck that we started at exactly that moment and got an initial audience right away. Um, and then that audience was very vocal in what they wanted and they pushed us actually into talking about fashion. Although Lorenzo always had a background in fashion, always had a love of it. I kind of had to be trained. Uh, but um, once we started talking about Project Runway, people wanted to hear what we were saying about other forms of fashion, more, you know, legitimate forms of fashion. And that we, Right. We evolved. We evolved right. into what we are now, which is basically a red carpet and runway. Right. Then we moved to red carpet and then, you know, fashion reviews, you know, and, and I mean, fashion show reviews and, and things like that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put a question on screen right now from one of our viewers that I love because it's a perfect Wall Street Journal question. And it said, when and where did you start to monetize your blog? <laughs> so basically, when did it turn from a hobby into sort of a money making venture? And Tina, do you want to take this one? You know, ours was almost immediate because Kelly's husband was a software engineer, is a software engineer, and he said, you know, to help pay for this $20 a month or $10 a month expense, I'll put up some Google ads, and maybe you'll make $10 a month, and it'll run this little journal for you. And we said, sure. We didn't know. I mean, within two months, it made $400. And then Netta Porte contacted us and said, 
you're using our images without consent. So either take it down or let us advertise and pay you. And I'm like, oh, let me see, uh, pay us or take down the photo. Sure, pay us. And so within two months, we started, you know, I think we made $400 the first two months. And my goal was always just to make enough money to buy Kelly a Birkin. And we made that goal within six months and it just kept rolling, you know, affiliate income and advertising income. Because back then, really, no one was discussing designer bags with the kind of expertise that we were because we'd been collecting bags since we were, you know, 12 years old. And we were, we were a lot older than a lot of bloggers that had started at that time. And our voice was so different. And we just didn't care. Like, we just wrote about what we loved, our passion for bags. And so the income just started coming in that way. That's awesome. And so, Brian Boy, I know and I've seen some questions here, too, about working with brands in terms of having sort of a relationship there and making some money. Is that possible? Yeah, definitely. I mean, for example, I mean, like, like Tina, I started monetizing my blog pretty much almost immediately. You know, I did affiliate programs and Google ads. But these days, um, I do focus on advertising. My, my ads, my display ads are being handled by Fairchild and Condé Nast. So I've pretty much outsourced that part of my you know, my site. However, there's a lot of like revenue to be made, especially for me. Um, right now, I'm, I do it through appearances. Like I go to different places in the world and I do ribbon cutting and like wave at people and get pictures <laughs> and take pictures. Yay, and, and it's fun. Yes, I do appearances and, and working with brands for the long term. I mean, ideally, I'd, I mean, for the past few years, brands automatically think that, oh, okay, the best way to work with a blogger is to put them all in a bus together, ship them to a factory, <laughs> learn about, you know, the DNA and history of the brand. I don't think that's the right way, you know? I mean, I'm all for long-term collaborations and establishing, you know, consistency and, and really just uh, work with a brand for the long term as opposed to just like doing one-off projects. I love that. And it's like unique and different. Yeah. With, with us, we did a collaboration with DKNY and we did a line of bags with them. And that was the first time that we were paid really well to design something. We realized, oh, there's a whole other aspect of it. So we kept, you know, I feel like Brian and Tom Lorenzo and myself and the bloggers that have been around for a long time we're paving our own way. We're really blazing trails and figuring out how different ways to monetize our blog, still retain editorial integrity. I mean, just like with Brian, I'm being flown out to places, but I always let my readers know this is a sponsored trip. Mm -hmm. They're so nice. Thank you very much for a personal appearance, for me to be here. You know, so you kind of allow your readers to know what's advertorial and what is not. And that, I, I love appreciate that. it. They, see it. They, they really see it. Like on my blog, it's very clear, sponsor press. I rarely take them on the blog. On bag snob, maybe I've taken it twice, but I'll, you know, but for just for me personally, if they want me to make an appearance, host an event, that all has been very lucrative because we're very influential. Brian shows up somewhere, he's going to sell those things. Tom and Lorenzo, people trust their opinions. So and Brian it, and I attend an event. And I think it's really, you know, really important. I think it's really, really important to only work with brands that you really feel that you have a relationship with, and it's, it's as long as it's organic, you know. I mean, for example, with my collaboration with Adrian Landau. I love fur from the beginning. <laughs> I'm so obsessed with it. So it's it's really we know it. yeah, it's really natural and it's just organic right. to be working with a fur brand. You know, I, I only work with the brands that I love, brands that are really really authentic to me, my perso my, my persona online, to my personality and my, my and what I like. I love and that. Also, Tina, I jump in things, here. I do things for free. I also do a lot of things. I'm not just, and not charge them because I love the brand and maybe they don't have the budget. So I think it's really important when you become a blogger and you become well known, you don't burn bridges. Like Brian said, it's a long term relationship. If they don't have the budget, I keep working with them. And I'm the oldest blogger out there and I still get so much work because I've been working with brands and I just do it because I love the brand. And they remember it when they have the budget, I'm the first, you're the first they're going to call. So don't always do things for money. It's because you love it. Because I love, I mean, I love bags. Everyone knows this. So when a bag brand wants to do something with me and I love the bag brand, I'll just do it. I'm like, don't worry about it. Yeah, sure. And then it always works out. I mean, like Brian yeah. and I, it's been years and years. And there's so many new bloggers, hot young girls and hot young boys. But we're still around because we treat it like a business. We're professional. Right. And it's not right. always chasing that dollar. Because sometimes a few thousand dollars is really in, you know, in the small photo of things. You really have to keep your eye on the big picture of why you're doing it, why you're blogging. Exactly. And it has to make you crazy like teenage love. If you don't love it, you don't have passion for it, don't blog about it. So I'll be Brian, when Brian is pushing me in my wheelchair, I'll still be holding all my bags. And he'll be pushing me in my wheelchair. <laughs> It'll be amazing. Like, yeah, I'll touch my bag. You know, I, just, yeah. I love bags. It'll be amazing. So, Tom Lorenzo, do you guys do anything unique or have you found think, any sort of 
different ways to make I think, money? I think to get started, I think to get started with your first question, which is very important, is since we're giving advice to people who are beginning, I think it's a little uh, ambitious to think that you're going to start right from the get go with brands. That's not going to work. Right. You know, you're going to have to start creating your own blog and, 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 you know, an audience and everything. And then the brands will see you, will look for you. You know, it, it's, it's silly to think that you're going to, I mean, it's silly to start approaching brands right from the get go. I think you have to start creating a unique voice, you know, something that people are interested in reading. And then even the brands will look for you. That's what happened to us. You, you know? have to show the brands that you are bringing something to the table. Right. But yeah. I, need, I think we need to make a distinction here because unlike uh, Tina and Brian Boy, we do not collaborate with brands. Not yet. I mean, we got some not offers yet. and uh, we're still thinking we're about it. It, it. It's 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 one step at a time. I mean, going back to the, your question, which I think is very important, is people, people think it's cheap. It's inexpensive to have a site or a blog. People think that it doesn't cost anything and it costs a lot of money. And believe it or not, the more readers you have, the more expensive the site. Yes. Right. Because bandwidth. It takes up more bandwidth. Bandwidth. Yes. People bandwidth. don't know that. People don't know busy. that. Yeah, you yeah. have 300,000, you know, hits a day or whatever. That costs a lot of money, you know. So, and, and because we do a lot of red card, for example, we have to pay for every picture we use because we don't want to be sued for using any image without any authorization. So you have to be very careful how you establish yourself, what pictures are you going to use, um, a budget, to, you know, because you, you need to know how much money you're going to spend, you know, starting a blog. I mean, you that can is, start with blogspot.com, which is fine, you know, and then take your own pictures. That's a way to start. But depending on what, what you want to do, you, you have to budget yourself and make sure, you know, you, you can pay for the stuff. Mm -hmm. you, you That's a great point. All the time on the and, and then writing you a start business plan, having a business plan, knowing what right. you want to do. Right. Three to five year plan is what I always have, like in my mind. I want to be doing this. I want to be doing that. Right, right. You guys, and then you start like with... we started. Go ahead. Can I'm sorry. We started like 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 everybody else. We started with uh, Google AdSense, you know, like Google ad uh, advertising, and then we started um, getting offers for affiliations, and that's what we have now. We have several affiliations as well as Google ad uh, ads, you know. So that's how we make our money. I love that. So I'm going to put another question on screen because I think this is a great one. Um, it's from My Style Daily, and um, they're asking, what were some of the biggest challenges you faced? Because I, I would imagine that at different points in the road, you guys had some serious hurdles. So tell me, um, let's start with Brian Boy here. Were there any times where you were just, you faced a big problem or something that made I, you I think, think, gosh, why I am think I one of the biggest um, challenges that I've, I've faced, you know, in the past eight years has got to be the confusion. Well, well, when the blogging phenomenon pretty much exploded, a lot of like the mainstream media didn't know where to put blogging or where, how to categorize blogging. So they pretty much pigeonholed every, pretty much every internet site out there as an online blog. And there's so many, you know, people are like, oh, is this, is, are, you know, are, will blogs replace journalists? Will bloggers replace journalists? Will blogs replace, you know, traditional sites? I mean, at the end of the day, blogs are just like, it's a different outlet. It's a different channel. You know, it's a different form of media. And to be pigeonholed into something that we're not, I mean, look at how, like, for example, look at fashion bloggers. There's different types of fashion bloggers. There's street style bloggers. There's personal style bloggers. There are, blo you know, bag blogs. I mean, just because you have an internet site, it doesn't mean you're necessarily a blogger, you know? And and having this connotation that a blogger is, you know, a blogger is a blogger, like a blogger is amateurish, what have you, I mean, it's really challenging, you know? It's kind of like disappointing how how some people treat bloggers because of like this whole, you know, thing. Yeah, so that's like, I, that's what I find yeah. challenging. Mm -hmm. Right, Okay. I think one of the biggest challenge, go ahead. Well, okay. I think one of the biggest challenges we had, and we still have, believe it or not, uh, even with you know being featured and 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 read as we are, is to prove that we have something to give to the fashion industry. I mean, it's still a challenge to these days. You, we still have to prove that we are something important. You know that we are a voice, an important voice. That's what I mean. Um, you know, we're not a magazine, we're not a newspaper, but we are. But we have an audience the size of a magazine. Exactly. That's yes. what people need. That's what the fashion industry needs to understand that we, I mean, we have, uh, you know, not to tune our own horn, but we have over 300,000 uh, hits a day on our site. 
So that's the size of a small publication or newspaper. And I'm one of those hits. I love you guys. All right, me too. Great. So, so I think that's something that they're beginning to understand, but not not quite yet. And then, and yet, you have. So we do have to prove every day, uh, you know, that we do is is actually valuable. <laughs> Okay, Tina, before you jump in here, I'm going to put another question that I think is sort of relevant here, too, that it's how do you, um, sorry, it's going to come up, how do you stay inspired and continue to provide original content? You've been doing this for a while, Tina, and so how do you keep finding bags and things to talk about? You know, about? We, Kelly and I were discussing this the other day, and I told her I'm kind of bored, I'm uninspired, and we just kind of take a step back and kind of just, you know, think about what we love, why we started doing it, and we constantly change the blog. We're, always doing different things. We're actually launching a new blog. We have six blogs already. But we, no. we yes, and it's going to be all original content. It's going to be called snobessentials.com. And Bag Snob will stand on its own, but Beauty Snob will link to it. So all the other sites will feed it onto this one lifestyle blog, which is what we've been doing a lot, where instead of just putting up a bag and saying we love it or we don't, we're doing a lot of outfit posts and celebrities and interviews. We just had Emmy Rossum on. You know, I'm an editorial blog. I'm not a personal style blogger. Like Brian, not a celebrity style blogger. I'm very niche specific, and my audience, like they come on, they want to know about bags, and so we we really keep it fun and interesting by engaging them. Snob or slob, do you like it? So I think you have to think about what you want to read, and that's what we always discuss. Like what makes me inspired? It's true. Then I'll then I go because I'm bored. You know, my God, my readers are going to be hating it. So I think to stay inspired, you constantly read, be educated, be on top of everything. I read every like. I read everything from Vogue to Vanity Fair. I have stacks every day next to my desk, and I read it all. And I go on websites. I go on Brian's site, Tom and Lorenzo. I go on style.com. I go on to other blogs. I'm constantly reading and keeping myself updated on what's out there. I go. That's why I attend shows. People think we're just playing, but we attend shows to see the new things. Like We have to go to do our job. It's yeah. not like, oh, we're going to go and party and, and be cool and fabulous and get our photos taken outside the tents. I don't even stop. It's like I'm trying to run. You've seen me, Elizabeth, in my heels, getting to the show. So I can do my job, and that's where I right. find inspiration and yeah. just being educated. Think, in Go ahead. Yeah, I think people don't understand how much work it is. I mean, we work ten hours a day. No kidding. We oh, we yeah. get up yes. at seven o'clock in the morning, 10 to 12. and we're 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 blog thinking until ten, eleven o'clock at night. It's true. Yes. We never it's stop. True. So people never. don't understand how much work it is. You know, people <laughs> see a post. People see a post that they scroll in five seconds. That you know, that post took forty-five minutes an hour yes. to be put. You know. To be put together. But I think Tina made a good point. Tina made a good point in that you have to uh, bring yourself into the blog every day in order to keep it fresh. Even if it's not a, a it's, I mean, our site isn't about us, even though it's our names at the, on top of it. But I will take, we will take our readers through our day uh, and we will hopefully take them along with us. And that's, that's how you get, you're writing about dresses day in and day out, or in Tina's case, bags day in and day out. Right. It's not always easy to keep that fresh, and the best way to do it is to make sure your voice is coming through each time. This is how I feel about this bag, this dress, this celebrity, whatever, and it doesn't get repetitive if you can do that 10, and 15 times a day, every single really day. Helps. And I think keeping, I mean, I've, if I hate a bag and I hate, just hate it, even though I work closely with that brand's PR, I post I hate it, and I did that over, the, over Christmas, and I did it all throughout, and that's what I'm known for, and I've had so many phone calls from friends who are in PR and we're like, oh my God, now you're making my job very difficult. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I have to do my job. And can you please take down the post? I'm like, no, I can't. It's up there. I can't take it down. And people know that about me. But they, they work with me mm -hmm. because eventually I'll find a bag I love from that brand. But I, that's, that's the voice that people ex right. have come to expect from me. If I love right. the bag, right. I'm going right. to say I do. If I don't, yeah. I'm not going to be like, oh, it's free. I mean, I'll go out and buy my crocodile bags. You know? Right. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the same thing with us. Sorry, just just to finish here. Just it's the same thing with us. We don't love every dress of every designer of every right. collection. I mean, sometimes we we're very critical about a look on the red carpet, and we piss yeah. them off. We piss their PR people off. But they have to understand two things: that we didn't like that dress on that specific person. That doesn't mean that the dress it's isn't good. Uh, the dress the dress is, that might work for somebody else. And tomorrow or the day after, we're going to be praising another dress from the yes. same designer because that one worked. And B, uh, they have to understand that it, we have that opinion, but we also have X, Y, Z amount of readers reading that post having a totally different opinion maybe. You know, yes. the bottom line is 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 people are now talking about that brand, good or bad. Right. right. Exactly. Talking about that dress, talking about that brand. That's the influence exactly. of blogs. Even though, 
Right. I love Whether they like. Are, I love that you guys are talking about sort of the the harder edge or the negative side because I think that can be really tricky for bloggers. You know, so many fashion bloggers, bloggers are right out there like I love everything oh my, kind of thing. Oh my god! Like, you, can't can't you can't love everything. everything. <laughs> you can't love that's, everything. That's one of the very that's one of the very disappointing things about the blog voice that I see nowadays is that they're loving everything. They get stuff for free, free and they absolutely love everything. Yeah. Right. They feel the pressure to love everything to be to be sitting front row or to to mm -hmm. to get more bags or to get more clothes for free. So that's very disappointing to me because we created a new voice. We created a new identity. And it's and it's sad to see we losing it for for right. a free bag or for a front reach up or for a, or for a front row seat. You guys I'm gonna put another question up on screen here from Ashley. And she says with a saturated market of bloggers and if you do not have a huge following, what advice do you have on gaining more visibility? So uh, Brian Boy, why don't you take that? I think ultimately what it boil, what it all boils down to is that you're you know you have to have a you know unique point of view you have to have your own personality you have to have your own thing I mean there's so many bloggers out there they're all doing this you know they're all doing similar things I mean how many girls can stand in the middle of the street get their photo taken by their boyfriend <laughs> or worse or a sister you know so really <laughs> you have to yes. I don't, I mean, you have to find a re, you have to, you have to find something special, you know, you have to have something in you that's really, that's really different from, from what everybody else is doing, you know, that, that's how, I mean, even with the first generation of bloggers, you know, Scott Schumann is doing something different than Tommy Ton or Susie Bubble, who I think is the oracle of like fashion, just different from Tavi, you know, everybody you know, from the first era of bloggers, I mean, the first generation of bloggers, they're all different from one another. So I think it's really, really important to have your own point of view, you know, you, your own personality, what you can give to your readers. I mean, if you make them smile, make them laugh, get them, get them, get them to talk about you. I mean, I love, I love provoking people <laughs> online and, and just to make them feel something, you know, like, I really love it. It really entertains me to make my readers smile or make them laugh or make them or just to try to get emotion from them. I mean, mm -hmm. I just don't, I mean, every, everything that you do online, whether you post an image of yourself or image of other people, you have to put context into it, you know? I am not gonna post a picture of me just because like, oh, okay, I'm gonna be wearing like a Burberry trench, what have you, you know? There has to be a story in it. And you really, you just have to have your own, do your own thing, you know? And that's, right. that's how you gain visibility. I mean, anybody, you know, I mean, uh, even with online, when, when the blogs first exploded, you know, people, people found my website because nobody was doing what I was doing. You know, I was in Russia, I was like playing with my furs, you know, and, and nobody was doing what I was doing. So people started to talk about what, with your furs. <laughs> everything. I was like sitting on top of a camel, you know, it, in the Great Wall of China. I mean, just like, you know, nobody was doing what I was doing at the time. So people, you know, people love something new. So in order for you to gain visibility, you just have to do something new or really just focus on that, you know? Yeah. Okay, before, I'm going to ask someone else to answer this question, but I just wanted to remind everybody that if you have a webcam and you want to come on camera and ask a question to all these wonderful people, <coughs> uh, you are very welcome to do that. So, um, Tom Lorenzo, do you want to sort of weigh in here on, you know, I mean, if you don't have a big following and if you are trying to sort of get your blog off the ground, if you have any advice for... Well, blog? I think Brian Boy nailed it uh, with your voice. You've got to come out of the gate with a very unique voice, and if you don't have one, you need to figure out how to, how to build one. Um, there's a flood of content out there, and the only way you're going to differentiate yourself from the other content providers is through your voice. The second bit of advice we always give new bloggers, and they don't want to hear this, is content, content, content. Yes. You, especially starting or starting out with a small audience, you need to produce a ton of content. You need to constantly update. None of this once a week stuff. <laughs> and you really shouldn't even be doing once a day stuff. It is multiple times a day, right. multiple points being made in your own voice without being repetitive so that the first time a person comes to your blog, they'll think, oh, I'm going to come back tomorrow. Or even better, oh, I'll bookmark this and keep coming back every day. You cannot expect, you have to, every, you have to look at your front page every day as if through the eyes of someone who's never seen it before, who's coming upon it for the first time. That's right. right. Um, and you have to, you know, tantalize them. You've got to give them a lot and a reason to come back. 
So it's voice and it's content. Those are the two big things. You cannot, I cannot uh, undervalue those. That is a great point. I think point. it's I really think. important to remember that if you want to blog, you should do it because you love it. Don't do it because you think yes. you're going to get famous, you're going to hang out with Brian Boy, have champagne with him, and get free bags or whatever it is. <laughs> I mean, I think that you gain visibility. Like, this is all very organic. Brian and I met almost eight years ago backstage somewhere. We're like, ah! You know, we became ah! friends. It's not like, it's not like yeah. I did this to be famous, and he didn't either. He was at home petting his pajamas in a Marc Jacobs bag and, and fur when I first started, when discovered him. And So I think it's important to keep your head down, to work really hard, find something you feel really passionate about, and just blog about that. Stay focused on it. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Just do what you mm -hmm. love doing. And that's going to show. That's going to shine through the people who will see, you know, they'll see that. And that's going to give you visibility. And do social media. Get get involved. Join things like this. Like now I'm looking at these people. I'm going to click on their blog, you know, because they they took right, the time out right. to watch our interview. They took the time to do questions. I'm going to go look at that blog. And if I like something, I might link to it, you know. So just be engaged with the community and constantly and work, work, work. It's not about getting famous. And if you do get some fame, you are not Katy Perry. You're not a celebrity. It's You're there for a reason. Fashion brands invite you because they want you to take your voice, influence your readers, and that's that's your job. Right. That's it. You're, you know, right. it's I think I think you need to do your part. Very few get to the Brian Boy status, by the way. He's the only one that's the most visible mm -hmm. blogger in the world. He's become yeah. a celebrity. But on that's show. true. The rest of us, the rest of us, you're the super the rest of us are just bloggers. The rest oh of us God. are just bloggers. Right. That's true. Bloggers have to Guys, I'm going to put another question on screen really quickly um, and that I think is a good point because some people if they're starting out doing this they probably also have a job so this question comes um, from one of our viewers for those who still have to work work a job and pay the bills how can you balance that as well as update daily on your blog so some of you guys I believe started while you were still doing other jobs yes mm -hmm. right my blog was uh -huh. my first job. <laughs> I, mean, I was a freelance web designer. I was a freelance web designer, and then, you know, of course, I was in, I, I had my own time. I was in control of my own time. So I, you know, I didn't have a day job. I didn't have a nine to five. I'm going to go to the office today, then blog later. You know, it wasn't like that. You work at night. No. If I think, you have a I think job in the day you... and you love blogging, you, you work at night, right? That's what you and Tom, Lorenzo, right. you and Tom did. I think, yeah. I think I th what, the other thing you can do is, is you prepare the post ahead of time. You know, take notes of what you want to blog about and then take the weekend, you know, spend the weekend preparing all the posts for the week. You know, they don't you don't have to do it, you know, at the same time you're posting them. Yeah. At the end of the day, when if you're lucky enough to become a successful fashion blogger, you are going to need to drop 200 words on a dress 10 times a day every day or a bag or something like that. You are going to need to cultivate that skill no matter what. So. Uh, you even with a full-time job if this is what you really want if this is what you really love then you should be able to knock out three to four hundred words at night right. that you can post the following day or something like right. that that's right. the bottom line it is all hard work yeah I just went back to what uh, Tina said uh, you have to love this because I remember when we still have our jobs and we had to post every day and we had to work on the blog and it was so hard so many times we had the conversation like all right should we keep doing this mm -hmm. you know we're not focused on paying our bills here you know we're not focusing on on our real job <laughs> so that we can pay our bills so you really have to love this uh in order to make it work and uh, otherwise you know if you go into this thinking okay i'm going to attend a bunch of, of, of fabulous shows fashion shows yeah. or i'm going to get free stuff forget it that stuff comes a if you're successful b right, yeah. if you keep doing and loving what you do i mean the brands will come to you if you do a good job uh the brands will come to you if you have a unique voice and if you have an interesting blog site not the other way around by the way can i just say like can i just say to people I, can i just say like i don't understand why everybody thinks that you know the, you know, the barometer of like being you know, the, the barometer of like have, making it is like being invited to shows. I mean, I don't I know, know about you, but for me, it's like an obligation. <laughs> it is. It's work. <laughs> like, it's do true. we really have to go to this show? Like, do we Reiner really? Doing a job together, <laughs> and it's like we were discussing last night. Oh my god! This but you know, you go because it's part of your job. It's your job to go report on everything you see. Exactly. And not just what you like. You have right. to report. I have to go and work with brands I may not buy, but my reader likes it, so I have to go report on exactly. it. Exactly, and you have to, yeah. And it's tiring fashion week. I mean, 12 hours a day, we're in my high heels, in my case, running, going show to show, 
so scared hour. to be late for a show and you know it's oh like oh my god that's the worst hard the worst, that's the worst. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So you guys, oh, yeah. You know, yeah, just to give you an idea how it works a day, a, a fashion you know, show day for us, it's like we get up, we attend shows all day, then we'll go back to our hotel and stay Vlog. up, not kidding, stay up until 2 yes. or 3 o'clock in the morning Vlogging. preparing the post for the next that's day. Right. right. So that's that's the fabulosity of fashion. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. So we're going to keep this going because there's so many great questions here. And I wanted to ask one of my own about um, interacting with your readers, be it on your blogs, on social media. You guys are all super active. And I feel like I've gotten to know you all through that. So talk about how important it is. And that also seems to be like another job that there's a lot you're sort of always on. And like I, Tom and Lorenzo, I want to start with you guys because during the Golden Globes, you were like my go-to for thoughts on the red carpet. And I loved it. But that's a lot of work too, right? Oh my God, it's a lot of work. People don't realize. I mean, the night of the Golden Globes, we tweeted for five straight hours, live tweeted for five straight hours. And quite often during award season, we will get kicked off of Twitter because we're doing too much tweeting in too short a period. They will actually lock us out. Uh, I didn't even know there was a limit. <laughs> I didn't but, either. Um, I know. <laughs> people, do, yeah, that's, there's what you do on your blog, and then there's what you do on social media. And that feeds your blog, but it's an entirely separate job. Um, and it cannot be, again, cannot be undervalued. Social media is, uh, Facebook and Twitter were huge in helping us uh, jettison into the professional sphere of blogging. Um, but it is a full-time job. You have to be very careful because you are giving, you want to sound like the voice on the blog, but you have to do it sometimes in 140 characters or one picture or something like that. And because it's so much more interactive, you have to be very careful about getting into fights with people because people will try to goad you on. And you just have oh, to keep it light and keep it in your voice and just keep things moving. It's an, yeah. it's, it's an entirely different job, but it is a job. If we have, you have no idea how many times people were replying, are you guys on crack? Did you really like that dress? You know? Right. <laughs> so, so we just laugh but because I think it's great. Because, you know, it means that they're engaged. Right. But but sometimes, you know, we're just like, all right, we have to step back, you know, not reply to this because... That's why it works as a couple, because one of us will pull the other one back and say, oh, no, honey, don't get into a fight. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's Kelly and I, because so, I used to engage all the time. Yeah. Like, people would say stuff, and I, you know, write back, and finally we're like, okay, just just let them write whatever they want. <laughs> They can, and I they think went. and I think it's not fair to the other followers to 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 you know to read all that stuff you know like you're right. getting to a fight no, with they're following person, you because the they other, find you the interesting. other thousand of people are reading right. right so Brian boy how about you what do you I mean you're on Twitter all the time and I love it I know <laughs> well it, it's really fascinating how at first you know Twitter pretty much killed my blog because I would update Twitter more than I would update my blog. And for some reason now I'm so obsessed with Instagram. It's kind of like Instagram kind of like killed my Twitter account. <laughs> like I don't tweet so much anymore. I just like Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. But yeah. I think with you know, it's really, really important to have a presence in, you know, different social media forms or, or channels that work. Right. I mean, for example, with me, I love Instagram, I love Twitter. I'm not that active on Facebook. And then I have my blog. But what I do, in, you know, I use Twitter and Instagram and all of these places to kind of like supplement my blog. I mean, I wouldn't release everything on on, on, on social on social media as opposed to, let's say, on the blog, it became like, that's where I'm going to put some of my good stuff, you know, and then some of the outtakes, I would put it on, on, on Twitter or what have you. But Twitter is something else. I mean, I'm very, very transparent on Twitter. Like, I really try not to control myself. Um, sometimes I, I kind of like joke to myself, like, oh my God, maybe I should be one of the celebrities who all they say is like, oh, hi, good morning, good evening, hi guys, what are you guys doing? What, <laughs> morning. I, <laughs> and, uh, I love you all, like, five times, and whatever, you know, like, I can't do it. I mean, I'm really, <laughs> I'm really myself. And, you know, what I really, I mean, at first I was like so worried whether, oh my God, will brands continue working with me because I'm like crazy on Twitter? But, but this is like the essence of me. This is what, you know, people love about me. So I may over tweet, over share a lot of times, but you know, for some, you know, people love it. So there are, of course, you know, there's several people who wouldn't agree with everything that you say. Sometimes people would take things that just you say out of context. For example, I recently tweeted something like, hey guys, it's fashion month, you know, <laughs> time to go on a diet. And people 
take it in a different way. I mean, oh, there's always a fine, you know, yeah, there's yeah. always like a fine line on everything, you know, like whether you're joking or not. But but if people don't agree, I mean, not everybody will agree with you. But for me, like I just try to, you know, I try to be myself, try to stay true to myself. Um, I may say things that, you know, not everybody will agree, but at the end of the day, everybody's more than welcome to unfollow or block, you know? Exactly. It's their choice. Okay, so guys, we have a yeah. question coming on from a viewer. She's going to come on video, I think. So, Brian Boyd, we're going to take you out very quickly, and uh, we'll bring you back to answer, though. So, yeah. I'll let our producers bring um, our guest up. Let's see here. Hi, guys. Hey. Hi. Is it Darcy? Hi, Darcy. Yes, Hi. it's Darcy. Hi, Darcy. <laughs> I'm from Ottawa. Go ahead. I'm from Ottawa, Canada, so basically my question oh my is, um, if you're not in New York or you're not in a large city, how do you take your blog to the next level? Like, I'm doing it as a hobby. I have my personal style blog, but I'd love to make it a career. I'd love to write. I would love to do it as a business, as a career. What is your number one piece of advice to bring it to the next level? Oh, this is great because Tina is not in New I'm, York. I'm and not in New York. Right. I'm oh, yeah, you're in Texas. Dallas. I hear that. And I have to say... Um, I have to say, it actually has worked in my favor. Had I stayed in Los Angeles or was in New York when I started the blog, you're kind of like a small fish in a very big pond. And the fact yeah. that you're somewhere that's not full of fashion bloggers, it's going to make you stand out. Because when you post things and people in your area Google for something and you pop up, you're, you know, you're going to be very different from everybody else. So I think that's actually a plus when you start as a blogger, not to be in a big city. Don't you guys think, okay. Tom and Lorenzo? Uh, I think in, you work, you I think in a lot of ways our careers would have been our careers in blogging would have been easier if we were based in New York in a lot of ways but mm -hmm. ultimately I think not being in a city like New York or Los Angeles actually helped That's us right. because we have that voice of being like the snarky outsiders yes. so in our <laughs> case it was nice that we weren't too entrenched in that world even though we love that world and we visit that world often it helped that we were not of that world every single day. So, and the local uh, press, you know, the you local just got to find the voice of Ottawa. What is it like being yeah. a girl in Ottawa writing about fashion? That's your starting point. Right. Well, Thank Darcy, you. tell us, Darcy, tell us what's the name of your blog? Uh, it's The Eternal Optimist, and it's eternaloptimist88.blogspot.com. Okay. okay. Awesome. I can consider out. myself Eternal Optimist, always looking on the better side, and, yeah, especially of fashion. <laughs> It's That's just about awesome. finding your voice and broadcasting your voice as loudly and as often as possible to your audience. Okay, perfect. And, yes, and Brian Boy started in Manila in the Philippines. The biggest blogs right now, none of them started in New York or L.A., so I don't think that's going to be a problem for you, Mar uh, Darcy. Yeah. yeah. Good that's really inspiring, seriously. Excellent, excellent. Darcy, we're going to take you off, but thank you so much for asking your question. We really appreciate Hi, it. Hi, Darcy. Thank Hi, you guys so much for your advice. Seriously, it's appreciate We'll bring Brian Boy back here and see if he has any thoughts too, because I know he was. Um, yeah, I mean, I all it's over the world. I'm, only, I'm <laughs> hugging you. It's now. funny because like I started, I started my blog in the Philippines, you know, and it's only until last year that I moved to New York. So I mean, living living somewhere where it's not a fashion capital, it's there's you know there's a lot of advantages. I mean, you really just I mean at least with what I do. I try to bring my world to the world as opposed to like doing something else. I mean, it's the whole point of blogging. It doesn't really matter where you are in the world. You can be in Kansas, you can be in Australia, you can be anywhere and you show your world to your readers. That's the whole point. I mean, I, I love travel. That's the DNA of my site, you know, travel and fashion. And I love bringing my, my readers to different places around the world as if they're traveling with me. So it's not just on the blog, but on all of my social media outlets. So I really, that's the whole essence of blogging, to just really share your experiences, share, you know, whatever that you see, share where you are, and really bring your readers, you know, to where you are. Excellent. I'm going to put another uh, question on screen here, you guys, because we've had a lot of questions about um, working with brands and collaborating with them. So the relationships that you have, and I think Tom Lorenzo, you guys can jump in here too, because you all have relationship with brands to a certain amount, right. to a certain extent. You go to shows, things like that. Right. So how do you start to get on their radar? And let's ask this question from Champagne Picnic. How do you initially establish the relationships with these brands? Yeah, believe so, it or not, the first brands that contacted us were through Twitter. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. See? Yes. The magic yes. power of Twitter. I love it. <laughs> exactly. But the reason that's the case is because uh, we have what uh, those brands would call PR value, and that, that PR value comes in our readership. And the thing is, when you look, the great thing about Twitter is you click on someone's profile and you get a pretty good understanding of how big their following is because you can see how many people are following them. <coughs> this is the ways in which social media helps bloggers. It's, it's a way of putting your importance, the size of your audience, right out there for people to see. That's why it's That's right. important to cultivate a, a Twitter following. Um, ultimately, in our initial outreach to any brands or when brands out, reached out to us, it was because they knew we had an audience. Um, and when you are reaching out to brands, one of the first things you should let them know is, here is my audience. This is the size of my audience. This is the makeup of my audience. This is what I can broadcast to about your brand. Right, right. I think, I think bloggers forget that what you have to keep in mind when you approach brands is the first thing you need to, to know and, and tell them is what you have to offer them. Right, right. Uh, and, 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 and bloggers tend to forget that. You know, they, they just want to be there. They just want to be part of it. But they forget the most important thing is because, you know, these people are very business oriented. So what, what you as a fashion blogger, what, what, what do you have to offer me? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a business uh, transaction there in a way. And what you should um, not do is contact brands for free swag and that's what I'm right. my yeah. friends who are, Thank who you, are Tina. designers, that's the they send me these for, emails like so and so is like, I'm an influential blogger and wherever and I can do this for you if you will send me this and that I'll wear it and, and I'm like horrified I've never sent an email like that in my entire life as a blogger me ever. Me too. <laughs> I buy what I want and sometimes brands are very nice they're like we saw that you love this bag we like to gift it to you then you say a thank you but I've never yeah. reached out to a brand that's not the way to work with brands the way to work with them yeah. is I would like to work with you do you send samples for shooting this is my point of view right. may I come into your showroom respectfully like any business like you wouldn't start a relationship with even a friend by like, hey, I want this, I want this from you know, it's that's not the way to work with them. Like, just be a professional right. business person and approach, write out a nice, thoughtful email or you know, call them. That's always nice. So just be thoughtful and be professional. That's how you work with them. Like with yeah. me and DK and Y, our relationship came about because I hated a bag. I blogged about how much I hated it, and she reached out to me via email and on Twitter and was like, have you not ever taken a photo of yourself that wasn't flattering? And I said, all right, point taken. Do you need to look at? I looked at it. I still hated it. And I sent it back. To it. it was just samples back and forth. And then finally there was a bag. But this relationship developed because she reached out to me in a certain way instead of ignoring her and deleting. Because, you know, brands are going to reach out to you and say, I didn't like what you wrote. And don't be scared. Don't just delete. Write back. Well, that was right. my opinion. You know, is there something else you'd like right. me to look at? Don't delete right. and be like, oh, I'm scared. You know, be professional. Be a grown-up. Even if you're 12 years old or 18 years old or 20 years old or even 50, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you're a blogger and you get these kind of emails, be professional and just engage. Engage in conversations with these brands. Right. That's a great tip. You guys, we have oh, oh, I'm sorry right. to interrupt. We have another person to come on. Um, I'm not sure if that person's okay. ready yet. Um, let's see here. Actually, Tom Lorenzo, do you want to keep talking? Sorry, we're not quite ready yet, but I'm you want to. I was just going to say, okay. it's important that you're honest. You know, I mean, we get so many emails offering us stuff, and we we refuse to to accept them or to uh, to yep. feature them on our site because we don't think they're they represent us, <coughs> you know, or yes. because we don't think it it it's 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 our voice or it's our blog or our site. You know, right? Don't just accept it because it's being given no. to you for free. I mean, no. I mean, make sure. It, I've had. I mean, I've, I've even had a brand who sent me like a PDF lookbook of like watches and said, Brian, we want to send you like several watches, pick something from the lookbook. But, you know, we want you to blog about it. And I said, no, I, I don't do this, exactly. you know. And, and of course, the guy, the PR guy threatened me. I mean, of course, it's Italian, blah, blah, blah. He threatened me how, oh, so this is how it works now. Like, I cannot work with you anymore. Like, and I said, well, this is not, you know, this is, it's just like I don't like anything. I don't really wear watches, you know, and it's just like not me. And PR people will do, you know, some PR people, the professional ones, I mean, there's a lot of them. I mean, they're, they're, they do their job well. They'll understand. But there are people out there who are really, really vicious. And, oh, my God. You know, but I mean, even with everything. No, don't take it too seriously. You yeah. know, anything that you, you know, see, don't take it seriously. It's all business and then nothing's personal. You mean don't take it personally. Take it seriously. Don't take it personally. Yeah, don't, don't take it personally. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's okay, guys, we've got another question I'm going to put okay. on screen. Coming? 
um, that says, do you ever guys want to transition out of the blog world and into something more solid and physical, maybe like a magazine? But Tina, let's start with you because you have sort of, I mean, and a couple of you guys have I'm doing products. magazine work. I have, I have I a too. monthly column for China Cosmopolitan. I'm collaborating right now with U.S. Bazaar with Ms. Glenda Bailey. I'll be doing something with them. And I don't think it's because I want to jump out of the blog world. It's just a natural transition part of my job because my voice now is being recognized by print media and they would like me to add my voice to their magazine. So my monthly, my new one just came out in January edition of China Cosmo and I just got contacted by China Vogue to also write a column for them. And I think it's fun. It gives me something. It, it inspires me more to do for my blog as well. So I think it's, I would never leave the blog world. If, if every one of you stopped reading my blog, I will still be blogging about bags. I will just keep going. Right. <laughs> I love that. In my yeah. wheelchair. <laughs> Kelly and I always yeah. say, we do this because we love it. The minute we don't love it, we'll shut everything down. We'll quit. But, you know, we're still excited and we I love agree. what we're doing. So. I agree. And magazines yeah, I agree. are part of it. We, we got, I mean, it's same thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's a process. We got TV offers and now we're thinking about it. First we said no immediately. Now we're thinking about it. So we're meeting people about TV shows. Uh, we're writing a book. So, you know, it's just a process. You get these offers. And but in our minds, all of that stuff is not to get away from the blog. It actually feeds back it into the blog. Is. Yes. Mm -hmm. exactly. exactly. If we do a television exactly. appearance, then we're going to get more readers. If we publish right. a book, not it. only will our readers buy the book, but hopefully new readers will come to the blog. That's, That's right. the idea behind it. That's right. Synergy. That. Brian Boy? I mean, in my case, I mean, of course, I mean, I mean I've been blogging for eight years, and I really, really love what I do. Um, I've already started to dabble in television. Um, I'm taping my second cycle for Top yeah. Model again in February. So I've decided to do it again. And then I'm flying on, on Tuesday next week to go to South Korea for Project Runway Career. I'm going to be a judge. So anything that I do in the, in the real world, in the outside world, again, like Tom and Lorenzo said, it feeds into the blog. I mean, right. I mean, I'm, of course, I mean, I'm also planning long term. I mean, can I still, I mean, will I still blog the same way I'm blogging, you know, let's say 10 years from now? Do I want to be that 40 year old dude taking pictures of myself? So, <laughs> of course, I mean, everything, everything has a shelf life. You know what I mean? Everything in this life has a shelf life. I mean, right. especially, especially with my blog, it's, you know, it's a, it's a personal diary. So maybe I'll expand more into lifestyle and less into like, you know, putting clothes on, on my body. But yeah, I mean, I, I try to get outside, you know, I always separate my, my blog life with my real life, you know, I, and, and I only choose, you know, a small percentage of my real life, you know, to share on my blog. I mean, whatever that you see in the blog, it doesn't really capture what I do in real life. The you rest know? you can catch on his Twitter feed at Brian Boy. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Okay, guys, I'm gonna put it. These questions are fantastic. So our audience is just the best. They're asking wonderful questions. So guys, keep asking questions. We'll we'll keep taking them. Um, I have another question here, and I think this is a great point. Um, this is for Bagsmap or Brian Boy working on your own. Who acts as your editor? Do you do it yourself? Because I know as a writer. I need an editor. I think I'm going to write editors. I have a copy editor because our, okay, our so, site is so content editorial driven, and I got so sick of people going, you spelled that word wrong because, you know, when I'm, when I'm looking at six blogs and trying to write for six blogs, I'm going to have errors. So about a year and a half ago, we finally hired a copy editor, and then we finally got graphic insurance. And this is for years that Kelly and I have done everything on our own. And it finally gave us free time to like explore Twitter and social media and do other jobs. So, you know, I'm not a one-man team. I have six blogs. I have Kelly, my best friend, who's got my back. We have two interns that do graphics. We have a copy editor. We have freelance writers because we wanted to bring in girls with different points of views because, you know, we're a bit older. We brought in two girls in their mid-20s, um, Sharon and Emma, and they freelance. And they post once a day, and they give their opinion as a girl living in New York or as a girl living, wherever, you know, in their opinion. So. But everything else we do ourselves, like we're not beneath going uploading links because you know if you don't if you don't know how to do your blog, then you shouldn't be doing it at all. So we <laughs> I agree. To, I right? agree. A new technology. I'm like this. How do you do this? Okay, do that link. Do that shadow image border. Oh my god, I'm going crazy. But I stay up at night because I if I have to know exactly what my interns know because what if they're gone? I'm on my own again. Right. You know so. You have to do things yourself and then get help when you need when you need a team because, you know, sometimes you need a team. In my case, I don't have an editor. You know, when I started blogging, I don't even proofread my, my posts, nothing. I mean, when I first started blogging, all my posts were like this long. I would spend like two hours 
thinking, overthinking everything. And then I realized people, over time, people don't really go to my site to read what I'm saying. They go to, to, you know, to see my pictures, to see what I'm doing, to just be in the know of what's going on in my world. So more and more, I, I write less, but I still, you know, I love how I, I try to keep my blog as, you know, it's, it's just like a diary for me. And on your diary, don't really proofread your diary. So people don't go to me for critical analysis or like news reports or anything. It's, an ent- it's just purely for entertainment value. And so that's why I, I, I made a conscious decision that, you know, even if I type a blog entry wrong or I misspelled something and I see it, I don't correct it. I love how everything on my site, I try to keep it raw. I mean, of course, some pictures are really blown out of proportion, exaggerated, but still, you know, like I try to really keep it in a raw state, you know, and I don't, I mean, people have always been told, you know, telling me, oh, maybe you should get a, a you know, a proofreader or a copywriter. I was like, no, I don't. I just want to keep it as it is. Yeah. And Tom and Lorenzo, do you guys kind of backstop each other or how does that work? Oh. Well, it helps that I was a copy editor for many years. Oh, see, um, that's right. <laughs> there you go. So, which, but, you know, there's plenty of mistakes that pop up in the writing, and uh, I'm sort of of the opinion of Brian Boy. Uh, I, we will correct mistakes when we find them, but I don't sweat it. Like, we are producing three to 5,000 words of content every single day, yes. and it's going yeah. up in, like, a 10-hour period. So there's going to be mistakes. That's what – they're typos. That's not a big deal. Um, the – if it's like subject verb agreement or some really bad grammatical thing, then it's kind of embarrassing. But I have to admit yes. that happens rarely. Right, right. Um, it's mostly just typos. Right. It's just misspelled words right. here and there. That's and um, that's called crowdsourcing because your audience will always be oh, there totally. to tell you that you misspelled a oh word God, within yeah. seconds. We'll get right. emails. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. before we, we even see the typo, there's like emails or, or comments. And I'm like, you know, just get up, go for a walk. And if it's still there, let me know. Right. Because <laughs> right. we usually correct them like in the first two minutes of publication. Right. Yeah. So, you know, grab a cup of coffee, go for a walk, walk your dog. If When you come back, if the typo is still there, then let me know. About right. It. Yeah, and really, we're not Wall Street Journal. We're not exactly, New York Times. exactly, exactly. But yeah, I do yeah. like to have you know my grammar proper, you know, dot the eyes because sometimes I'm blogging, especially in the beginning. My son is, you know, I have to put him to bed. Then I start working at <coughs> night. So I'm tired. It's nice to have a fresh pair of eyes to kind of just look at it for you. But it's, right. it's your blog. It's your voice. Don't like, don't take too much time thinking. Oh my God. Oh my. God. Just talk right the way you talk, and that's how we've always done it. So our readers really yep. liked us because they were like, oh, getting a blog post from me on email is like getting a conversation, you know, a phone call from you. Because I'm like, oh, my God, guys, can you believe this? And they feel like, I can't believe you write like that. And I said, well, that's how I talk. It's right. very conversational. <laughs> so that's how we do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to take yeah, another We're going to take another question. Authenticity is really, really important. Yeah. Just um, from I, so I can't believe it's almost an hour. I know. I know. We're going. I know. We have so many questions here. And I can't quite get this to work. But someone had a – oh, here we go. So how <coughs> – I love this question because I, it sort of piggybacks on a question I wanted to ask you. It says, how do you get up the confidence to do outfit posts? I feel like it's awkward to have someone take photos of you, of you to start out. And then I also would love for you guys to answer with um, just how important is it for your face to be out there, for people to know you. Like, Tina, I love all of your selfies, and we had a whole Wall Street Journal story on your selfies. So I'm going to let you start on this, but if you could just sort of talk My about about. My blog is not a personal style blog, so people don't really get to know Kelly and I on a personal level, and okay. at the same time, I don't want to show too much of my personal life, so social media has given me an opportunity to show that you know I'm cooking, and I'm actually, and I call my husband the hubby, and there's the boy, because I don't want to have their names or faces out there, but it allows people to feel more personal, and they might come back to your blog a little bit more, so okay. these outfit posts, you know, I do selfies. I don't have anyone to take my photo unless my eight-year-old son is, you know, needs a dollar to buy candy. He'll take a photo for me for a dollar. And, and so it's, I, I think being confident is just go look in the mirror, find a pose you like, take a selfie, and go from there. Ryan, boy, your face and is confidence. all over everywhere. I love it. Tell me, how do you well, confidence? Confidence takes, I mean, I mean, at least in my case, you know, back in the day, I mean, when I remember when I was a child, I really hated, you know, being photographed. Oh, stop! I had a phobia with a camera. <laughs> Seriously, I don't have a lot of like oh pictures of me as a teenager. I hated it. I hated it. I had bad skin, everything. So I just, I guess it's just really over time. And when I started blogging, I realized that a blog for me, my blog was a creative outlet. And it's almost like performance art, you know, like I, I, I 
I always try to push myself into like, okay, I haven't worn this. What can I do to kind of like irritate my readers? What can I do to make them smile? So I, I, I went through like a whole year wearing high heels. You know, I just like you know, wore a lot of things for my readers. And over time, I, that's how I got my confidence, you know? And it, it really takes a lot of time. I mean, I don't feel awkward now if I'm just going to post in the middle of the street and my boyfriend's taking my picture. I mean, of course, other people would be looking at you. I mean, I just like try to get it out of the way. I mean, at the end of the day, every time I get my photos taken by my boyfriend or my, my, my friend, if somebody, you know, somebody can smile or like take the piss or like, you know, I, you know, mock me. But at the end of the day, I'm the, you know, every time I get my photos taken, that's going to be another page view and I just, I'm going to get my ad money. So yeah. <laughs> that's all I care about. I mean, <laughs> it's another page view. It's another you know, revenue stream. So I'm getting my bills paid while you're standing there laughing at other people for what they're doing, you know? So <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it's like, yeah. Everybody has a trade off. Okay, guys, so we are going to wrap it up here, but I, I wanted to ask um, everyone to first sort of give me their final thought here. What is the one thing that you, when you were starting off doing this, what is the one thing you wish you knew or the one sort of piece of advice for people who really want to do this? This has been so great and so helpful, but if there's something else that you want to talk about, now is your chance. I'll let anyone jump in here. If I knew what I knew back in the day, um, I, I just, for me, I have no regrets. I have, I have, I wouldn't change any single way, you know, with the way I did my blog, my online persona, everything, you know. Um, I'm not saving the world. I'm not curing cancer. I'm not, you know, a neurosurgeon. I'm just somebody who shares my experiences to the world with hopes that other people would be inspired with, with, with what I do or be entertained or really just to feel something with what I do and hopefully buy the things I'm buying. <laughs> so everybody I'm, win -win. I'm Everybody glad, makes money. You I'm know? glad I didn't know <laughs> I'm honest. when I started because had I known it would become this, I wouldn't have been so organic and so brash in the chances I took because I didn't know it was just my little personal journal with Kelly because we, we were new moms our babies were napping okay what bag can I buy because all I did was I took care of my baby and I bought bags and so all of that that led to this was because ignorance is bliss and I just did it out of passion so yeah. I, I'm glad I don't know and I'm glad I didn't have yeah, I think it's interesting oh, famous one day and hang out and do personal appearances in China next week you know <laughs> Right. I think it's interesting because we feel the same. I mean, all our three blogs are, are pretty different, but yes. we feel the same way. It's I don't really think I have any regrets with how things or you how things unfolded with the blog. Uh, I think the fact that it was organic and that it moved organically is probably a big part of our success. And I think the same goes with Tina and Brian Boy. Um, you have to push and it's got and it's going to be a lot of work if you really want to make this your life. But you also need to give it room to breathe and need to let it unfold organically and be patient. I, we did not start making money until four years into it. Um, other people, it or was maybe, quicker. That's a good point. Yeah. I think maybe, it's the, I mean, ultimately, the, I mean, if you're going to start a blog, don't start a blog just to make money. Exactly. Right. exactly. Start a blog exactly. because, because you're passionate you about crazy, something. Because it makes you crazy, like teenage love. Yeah. It makes you insane. You can't live without it. Right. That's why you should blog. That's the only reason to blog, in my opinion. My very first thing I said to Lorenzo when he said, we're going to do a blog, and I said, fine, but get it out of your head. We're never going to make money, and we're never going to get famous off of it. It's never going to happen. <laughs> Uh, and I think Look at you everybody now. should go into it thinking that way. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was famous before on MTV, so I never thought this would make me even more famous than I ever was in my entire I chased fame my whole 20s. I was on TV. I was on MTV. So the first time in my life that I did something because I didn't think it could pay any bills, I just did it because I loved it, and it turned out to be the best thing I've ever done in my life. So take it right. from an old woman. <laughs> well you guys thank you so much thank you to our audience for all of their wonderful questions you, you can rewatch this this will will live sort of forever and tina tom and lorenzo brian thank you guys so much this was thank awesome you. advice we will be back next week with another topic um yeah. and then also right before fashion week we're going to um have a recap of all of our spree cast in the paper itself so you're going to want to look for that you guys are the best. Thank you so much. Thank Keep you, on Elizabeth. reading. Keep on blogging. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Elizabeth.
Thank yeah. you. Happy Fashion Week. Hey guys, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Tina. <laughs>